Hey guys, I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. I know it has been a very, very rough two weeks and I decided I should just talk about it because I think that talking about it is therapeutic. You can help people and you know what? We all go through things so we can be there for each other and have some input and advice. So this one is for the XJ Dub kids because boy, that is not an easy thing to navigate when you were born into the Jehovah's Witnesses and you left as a kid. So my kiddo got in major, major trouble this week. And a little backstory, he was about maybe 10, 11 when we left. And he was the one who took it very, very seriously. I would say that he, he loved the truth. That's what how I would say it. I remember thinking like, even if the other kids don't stay, I always feel like he's the one who's going to stay because if you said, come on, let's go in service, like he would pack his bag, like he loved it. And for the most part, people really gave him a lot of affirmation at the Kingdom Hall because he loved to give talks. And so all our friends were there. He, he was looking forward to going to the meetings and it was really hard for him to suddenly not go anymore. And then... You know, when you're a kid, you don't realize that this is going to be a huge deal in your life and the fallout from it. So that when we lost all our friends, that was horrible. But also, most of the family is still in the religion. So even though he was never baptized, they don't shun him. Um, but you do feel it. You know, you're kind of like on the back burner he sees some of the family sometimes it's just not how it used to be when we were with them all the time so my heart broke for him and I did notice that he was just approaching the teenage years and COVID happened and it was just really hard for him especially and he was just going through it and I think that when you leave a cult you have been very integrated so deeply into the cult that it affects you and it shapes you so once you leave we as the ones who were born into it we don't have anything to fall back on we never like celebrated anything and then became jehovah's witnesses and oh yeah i used to celebrate so i know how all this works no we don't even have that so i feel like for him he just wanted to fit in so much and I think he probably felt like he was a little weird because now we were all like these Jehovah's Witnesses his whole life and I, I, he just started hanging out with the wrong crowd trying to be cool and it has been a struggle for us because I really think he's a really good kid and I completely understand and I understand that he wants to fit in. I understand. And plus, I felt like me as a parent, am I not making myself and what I have taught invalid by now getting them out of the cult? So here we adhere to these teachings. And here they listen to me and they trusted me. And and then I have to sit down. And I do believe in honesty. And I I said, I explained, you know, I explained to them about CSA and about why we're leaving. And he did say we have to be like Rosa Parks and it touched my heart. But in the long run, don't you kind of start mistrusting your parents a little bit because you're like, well, I trusted her with this. Can I still trust her? in in this these other regards and like they will tell me all the time when i'm strict with something oh that's still your jehovah's witness self and i have to be honest that is really really hard for me to navigate too because i question myself is this because of like my jehovah's witness upbringing or is this really like not a good idea to do and when they challenge me with it now that they're teenagers it creates a difficulty for me i do struggle and so we're dealing with that. Well, anyways, I have compassion. He is depressed. I have compassion with that because of, 
I think when you leave and you just hope for Armageddon, the paradise and all this, and that hope was taken away from from you, especially in your teenage years, you are going to struggle with depression. And he has. So we have done everything to be there and help him. But at the end of the day, it's also teenager, you know, so it's not really that easy sometimes. Um, so this week in school, somebody had given him an edible and here's the problem. Um, medical marijuana is legal, is legal, but it's like just recreational is still illegal in our state. So that's problem one. Problem two is why bring it on school property? Oh, it's just so awful. So apparently a girl that he's friends with had gotten it from her adult brother and the girl, I'm just so glad they were not exchanging money. I think she probably wanted to be cool or whatnot and she passed out gummies to several people. And I think a problem here is too that they just don't understand the potency it's very different from smoking it. It's synthetic and it's very, very high potency. So my kiddo got one, one gummy. And a, one of his other friends approached him and said, can I have a bite? And he shared it with her. Now I'm lucky because, I mean, they're goofy for doing this at school have more than goofy they're wrong for doing it at school obviously but it was all on film but luckily in this situation it was on film because the girl took it from him and she put it in her sleeve and broke a piece off now i don't really know much <laughs> i mean i grew up as a j-dub so i don't really know much about any of these things and i'm not against it you know it's when it's when you're doing it legally whatever but obviously they're kids minors and on school property so yeah no um sadly it's in the same class as heroin and cocaine because it's still not legal here um and so she took a bite thankfully because i don't know so little about it that i think i would have taken the whole thing and it was over 300 milligrams one gummy it's just crazy so the girl she took her little bite and thankfully it was only a teeny bite and she handed him the rest back and then she went to the bathroom and she passed out. So that was a big deal. The ambulance had to come. Her parents are furious. I get it. And they're all wrong, obviously. Um, she tried to kind of blame it on my kid though because I think, I understand, she was freaking out. She didn't want to get in trouble. So she said that she she was hungry <laughs> and she asked him for if he had food and he said yes i have a gummy and then she proceeds to stick the gummy in her sleeve and breaks a piece off and hands him the rest makes no sense obviously you know um, and plus they have it on camera that she put it in her sleeve and that she just took a bite if you're hungry you're not gonna share a gummy and you're definitely not going to give the rest back. And this whole thing is just so ridiculous. But it was very hard to approach because the punishment is so severe. He's never really gotten in previous trouble at this school. He's all like in good standing with them. But it was just so incredibly stressful because your kid's future hangs in the balance. And I do think they should be in trouble but I don't think he's the sole person to be in trouble. Like, they all did wrong. She, And then it turns out that the girl had already smoked pot that morning. Um, so she was already high when she took the edible. Um, <laughs> but they're kind of trying to say, like, oh, he slipped me something and I didn't know what it was. Well, why did you put it in your sleeve then? So I told my kid, I'm like, in this case, you know, you did wrong and you deserve a punishment so you're going to take your punishment and he, I'm glad this happened now when you're not going to go to, you know, he, actually he could go to jail, but the police put it in the, in the school's hands, thankfully. But at the same time, he really almost got lucky that he got caught now and not when he's older, you know? So 
we'll, we'll have to deal with it. But it was just incredibly stressful. And at the same time, I just think that kids do really dumb stuff. Isn't like who of us can say that we didn't do something that was stupid, you know? So and it was just this whole thing. And he was like facing expulsion. And I have to honestly say, like, I was really, really going through it because on one hand, if you have kids, you have stress expected. There's there's going to be drama. It's just normal. It's part of it. But that's easier said than done because it just seems like things knock me over when stress happens. It's like this big wave that drenched me and like that I'm lying on the beach trying to get back up. And I so want peace in my life. But the reality is I'm still a parent and I wish this stuff wouldn't affect me as much, but it does. And so this whole thing really, really knocked the wind out of me. And I was just terrified because also you don't know what's going to happen. Is the police going to get involved? Um, You know, just all these things. So we just had to wait and see what happened. And so we had the meeting with the school officials. And my kiddo, he really like conducted himself. (laughs) And maybe I can thank the J-dubs for this because he's very polite and well-spoken and so he wasn't rude when he went in and everything so I think they really helped to put a good word in with him because it went to the county it was handled by the county and so there was a second meeting and he was gonna they you get a letter in the mail that they recommend for him to be sent away from the school that he's in and into one of those like Um, you know, schools where they rehabilitate you, which to me is kind of like a downward spiral because what if you're there? Well, then now you're really going to like go through it and struggle, you know, because you're in a pool of people who aren't really the greatest, you know, association. So we had the meeting today and because it was his first offense and his teachers like him very much, they decided to give him another chance and I just about cried I mean I was just really thankful because the thing is this I believe in consequences people need consequences for their actions but at the same time I don't think that someone's life should be completely ruined over over a first instance offense like mistake because kids make mistakes And I just don't think that people like the school officials can even understand what we went through when we left the cult. But that is a reality. I mean, he left a cult and lost almost everybody as a kid. How does your heart not hurt for him? It does for me, but I just don't think that a lot of people can understand that. And on the flip side, I'm thankful this happened now and he can still strive to do great and you know make something out of himself I was also thinking like what a mess this would have been if he would have been a baptized member of the congregation honestly because in all reality kids mess up and and we you know the j-dubs they kind of encourage kids to get baptized so early now so he's in his late teens now he would have been baptized at this point had we still been in the congregation and how horrible to think that your child got disfellowshipped which really brings me to the you know you know if you look in the elders book they have a whole section on like minors who get disfellowshipped and how wrong is that how are we shunning minors that sentence minors who get disfellowship to me is just mind blowing because how psychologically horrible is it for adults to go through this but for children in their formative years when now when they're living in your house and they have to eat separately from the family you can barely talk to them it's the whole thing is so messed up that they even do that or consider it And I thought about like the stress that these last two weeks have been for him and for me too, but how even worse it would be when now you have a judicial committee and you have to go talk to the elders and you're a minor. It's just 
nerve wracking. And I have a friend, she was 12 and she was kind of like making out with a guy from the kingdom hall and he grabbed her boobs, which really isn't even her fault. Well, she wasn't baptized, but the parents made her talk to the elders about it. And even at the time when I was still a jade up, because I was the same age as her, I was 12. I thought, oh my gosh, I can't believe your parents would bring this to the elders like my family would have handled that in house. But to have to go as a 12 year old girl and talk about your developing breasts to these two older men, like the psychological effect that this religion has on kids. And there was another case that I know where the guy was older, like in his 30s or 40s, but he had an affair with a girl in the Kingdom Hall who was like 14, 15. And they, of course, handle it in the congregation as you're both like fornicators. You're both going to get disfellowshipped. And let's be real, for real, that's pedophilia. You know, if a much older man has sex with someone who is underage, you're a pedophile. But in the congregation, kids get treated as adults. And Scientology does the same thing, you know. Kids aren't kids. Kids are adults in the congregation. And so they get treated, you know, you go to a judicial committee, you get shunned. Well, here she was a victim and she gets reabused. It's just so crazy. And I feel like this is one aspect of the religion that makes it really dangerous to what it's doing to children. The shunning to children, the victim shaming, the misogyny toward girls that with their constant criticism, how they're dressed, the videos that small children are watching these days that are so violent, it is not healthy. And all the pictures of doomsday. I mean, we grew up with pictures of doomsday. How creepy is that? And I really want to dive into like the psychological effect on all this and how it carries into adulthood. But I like really... I'm so glad that this mess is kind of being handled now and we're getting another chance. And I have to say this to all the officials in school. I will honestly say this. They were kind. How often were you in a judicial committee where they don't really want to help you and give you serious advice on how to deal with your depression or your anxiety or your stress because that's one aspect of it you know he he did this because he was feeling depressed and he wants to fit in not making excuses but it is kind of a fact and one of the the counselors said that they want him to have a safe space so they have a safe area and if he feels like he has anxiety or depression he can go and utilize this area and I thought that I had tears in my eyes because I thought that is so extremely kind because what they want to do is they want to get him back on his feet and really truly help him and at the initial meeting they said that to me too they're like what we want to do is we want to have him back and we want him to walk at graduation and I'm like these elders most of these elders they'll throw the book at you but kindness I had to go to a judicial committee and one of the elders I would say was extremely mean. He's writing all my sins down on his notepad. And, you know, he was just cruel to me where it really felt like kick me while I'm down. So I'm just so glad we're out of this cult and that this kid doesn't have to have extra stress when he's already dealing with enough. We didn't have to deal with the elders and the judicial committee. And that really brings up the question, should children be shunned ever, no matter how bad? Should a child be shunned? Which really leads to the question, should children really be baptized? I mean, that is a big topic. Should children be baptized? So Jehovah's Witnesses, if you're listening, I'm asking you, should a child be baptized? What do you think? I'm going to make another episode tonight on that subject because that's a big one. That is a big question. And to me, that is a big question which really puts the pointer on this religion that it's not the truth. Because they claim to have Bible truths in every aspect. 
while child baptism. That's a biggie. So again, I am just glad that we're out of this cult. My kid, they gave him another chance. He's back at school. He did not get expelled. They showed kindness to him. They want him to do better. And I told him, you know how you can thank these people for being so nice to you? By soaring in school. By doing really, really well. I hope he will learn from his mistake. But definitely shunning isn't the answer here. We're out of the cult. We don't have men that preside over us, that are self-appointed, that make the rules, that break up families, that really abuse children in how they want the members of the congregation to treat children and I'm just so relieved that I don't have to deal with that aspect on top of everything else it would be absolutely horrible and that my friends is freedom it really is so I'm very grateful for that today so thanks for listening I'll be back with more episode now that we got all over this so thank you and I'm back now